This is up, Rangers. Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make foam buildings for your kaiju displays. I've had quite a few people ask me how I made these buildings that I showed a picture for in one of our videos because uh, on my uh, vacation I decided to attempt to make some little destroyed buildings for some of the pictures that I do over on uh, Super Unimportant Reviews for a lot of the Godzilla, Pacific Rim, Ultraman figures, stuff in that realm of collecting. And uh, for this technique that I did, it worked really well for me. Uh, another video you can also go check out is from the Figure Mania show. Uh, he did like an entire diorama and showed you how to do it. Well, in this video, I'm just gonna show you buildings because for the most part for my pictures, I do a lot of upshots, so I don't really need a base. And for display purposes too, I would just have buildings set up anyway. So for the most part, that uh, doesn't really pertain to what I do. So I mainly just stick to the buildings. And for buildings that I did recently, uh, these are two of them, which I did one for a whole shot so you can have like a atomic breath or a beam effect going through it. And this one's just a, uh, just giant burnt up destroyed side building. Then you can also like for picture wise, you kind of like shoot through the hole for the monster. And I thought that'd be really cool. Kind of like uh, the 98 Godzilla film where you kind of just jump through the building. Hole should have probably been bigger for that one, but still. And also I did uh, two different techniques for these ones. And uh, I'll show you the one I preferred because I kind of preferred how I did this one over this. Because uh, for this one, I tried to be a little bit more precise and I cut the paper. <laughs> to match the size and it's still lifted up in some areas and for me I just don't like it quite as much like it'll do <laughs> but this technique I liked a little bit better as you can see the edges are nicely rounded so I'll show you guys how I did this building since in terms of just standing on your shelf I think this one will work a little bit better for you and for this video you can actually uh what's nice about this little demonstration is you can make this as precise as you want like you can go for the other technique that I did for that one and make it as clean as you can get, which is great. But for the most part, I like it fast and easy. So this is the, the general way I did it. But what you're gonna need in order to replicate this building here, or what I'm gonna be showing you guys, cause I'm gonna make some other separate buildings for more scene specific stuff and just uh, more damage buildings in general. And you're gonna need some foam board, which I prefer these standard foam blocks cause you don't really need to prep this and it looks pretty good once you paint it anyway. So I prefer using this and it works with the damage stuff too that we're gonna be doing. You're gonna need some, <laughs> that knife. You're gonna need some acrylic paint, which I'm gonna be using a pewter gray. You can also use like blacks, pretty much any color you really want, but I just like the gray look. You're gonna need some glue to mix with the paint so that it'll help keep the little foam particles we're gonna be using later attached to the buildings. Uh, a marker, not sure if we're gonna need it for this video, but I grabbed it anyways, but it's always nice to have a marker. In case you wanna be a little bit more precise, you're gonna need a big knife or a box cutter, which I just have this chunky knife laying around, so I'm using that. Exacto knife, a couple of brushes you don't really care about, so some cheap ones, preferably. A hot glue gun, some foam for the top of the buildings, and some cardstock. And I also forgot, you're gonna need a surface to cut on for your exacto knife and your knife. You're also gonna need scissors for this video. And you'll also need a computer. Now, uh, what the cardstock mainly is here for is to print our building onto, which I like using cardstock because it's easy to cut into and it won't have to worry about tearing the paper. It's sturdy, so it'll take a little bit more of a beating than standard paper and it'll run through a printer. So, uh, moving to the computer. All right, so first what you're gonna wanna do is look for building textures on Google, which you're just gonna wanna search on Google and then once you start searching, you're gonna to wanna to go to images, which a bunch of buildings will pop up for templates. Uh, you can pretty much pick whichever one you want. It's all personal preference. I personally like to go with ones that have a little bit less detail because when we're gonna be layering them later, it's a lot easier to line them up. But again, you can kind of just go with whatever you want. Uh, just pretty much pick whatever suits your fancy. Uh, also, if you want to try to like sell these buildings or anything, uh, you can't really do that with these uh, unless you find ones that are under public domain but uh, for pictures and around the house stuff this will work perfectly fine and the program that I use for editing is GIMP it's free easy to use it's like Photoshop uh, just download it if you do a lot of photos you can also use MS Paint if you really wanted to but it's a little bit more 
Well, it's a little different than this anyways. Uh, but for the most part, you can kind of reverse engineer this for paint and it'll mostly work the same. But what you're gonna wanna do is go and find your file for your building texture. Uh, I actually like to put them somewhere in their own little folder in pictures or wherever you're gonna have it. So uh, just make sure you know where it's at because it'll be a lot easier to find it if you already have a sense of where it's gonna be. But uh, what I'm gonna be using is a texture that is gonna sort of replicate this scene here from Shin Godzilla where Kamada-kun's scaling the building because that's the first little destroyed building that I'm gonna be doing. So this is a template I decided on for this video in particular. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the bottom right corner on GIMP and you're gonna to wanna to change it from pixels to inches because the sander will be pixels, but we need inches because we wanna know how big the building is gonna be in comparison to our figure. Now, you're gonna also wanna rescale the image because for the most part with it being standard, it's gonna be super huge next to our kaiju so we wanna make the buildings uh, at least smaller. They don't have to be perfectly in scale because especially of me doing photos, uh, I do a lot of different kaijus next to buildings. So as long as it looks okay next to it, I'm perfectly happy. But you can pretty much make this as, uh, I don't wanna say complicated, but as precise as you really want it to. Uh, you just pretty much just find the measurements for each of the floors and then you can figure it out pretty much from there. But for me, I just made it a few inches smaller so that I can start layering it up. But you're going to want to go up here at the top to images and you're going to want to uh, change the canvas size. Which I changed mine to 8 inches by 11 inches so that it'll fill the majority of the paper. Because we're pretty much going to be using all of this for today. Uh, so if you plan on making a bunch of buildings, I just recommend doing it this way. It does eat a lot of uh, printer ink, but if you're going to be using it all anyways, it's easier just to have it all in one sheet than start making multiple layers. And then we're going to want to start duplicating all the layers that we just made for the one little template. And then we just start filling our canvas with each of the layers. Uh, it doesn't have to be quite precise, but try to make it as close as you can. Uh, because with it being damaged and also with it wrapping around the foam later, if you have any slight imperfections, you're not going to barely notice them on the building anyways. And you kind of design the damage to go around the imperfections too. So if, if it's not exactly how you want it after you get it all done, don't worry about it. Because again, uh, you can kind of fix any little fudge-ups that you have later on with uh, damage effects. So, uh, once you get it fully done, you're just going to want to go to File and Print. And then once you get there, you're going to want to go to Image Settings. And just make sure that when it's in the preview window that it's going to be filling the entire paper. And then once everything looks correct, you print it out and then we move on to making the buildings. Now that we got our building texture, you can see here there's a couple of little inconsistencies in the building for the most part. But, like, looking at it from a distance, it's still going to look like a building. So... Uh, it's not as big of a deal having a couple of little spots that aren't quite as lined up because for the most part You're not going to be sitting this close to the building anyway scrutinizing over the details It's going to be here to help accentuate your figure So uh, again, what I want to do with this is have it set up to where Kamada-kun was like hopping over top of the building so uh, For the most part this guy wasn't super articulated <laughs> But I want to be able to have him like resting on top because as you, you've seen in the movie, he was a little bit off the ground when he was resting on top of it. So right about here is where I'm going to be wanting the building, right around his chest region. Uh, we're just going to get Kamada-kun about where I want it to. I want don't want the window to be the top section of the building. I want this cement section here. So I'm just going to Roughly, just realize that side's dry. I'm going to just line off where I kind of want the building to end. And then where you're going to want to make your line is also where you're going to be wanting to add the damage. Because if you do what I did here and it's not the cleanest line, you can hide this with the damage. Uh, but once you have that set up, we're just going to grab our exacto knife and I'm just going to cut along the top here. Now what you're going to want to do is just cut along the top here. You can use a ruler if you want to be super precise. Uh, I'm usually pretty good at just cutting straight lines. So I just want to go all the way down here. So I'm just going to start at the top. Because again, I'm just doing this to be quick. It doesn't need to be super precise. Especially since I'm going to be adding a foam top to it anyways. It doesn't need to be the cleanest line 
ever. And you're also going to want to cut off all these little edges. Uh, you could also use them for gluing onto if you didn't want to actually do foam on the undersection. If you want to just make a straight building. Uh, cardstock just works perfectly fine by itself. Then you're going to want to have the edges in order to glue together. Uh, but that'd be for like a different video. Because <laughs> the initial buildings I did was just straight cardstock. And they hold up okay, but they're not quite as sturdy as I would like them to be. All right, so now that we have it all cut, next we're going to want to cut the foam piece because we're going to want to be able to wrap this around the building there. So, uh, we're not going to be super wide because, again, we just want him kind of just crashing into the top section here. So I'm going to use a piece of foam that I've already cut into for my other buildings. And I'm just going to take a little bit bigger of a chunk than I think I'm going to need because I can shave it off a little bit here and there. Plus, whatever shavings that I have, I can use for damage later. So cutting off a little bit extra is never that bad of an idea. So just want to go into the foam. Cut straight down. There we go. So now I got my foam chunk. Now you take your piece, just sit it around. Don't fully bend it. But you see here, definitely, definitely too big. So now we just start cutting it in order for this to fit around. And to me, it seemed like it was about double the width. So I took off a little bit less here, but grab it, set it, wrap it around. That seems like that'll be pretty good. So next we're gonna need the hot glue gun. All right, so now that we got some hot glue, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is where your damage is going to be on your building is where you're gonna wanna put the seam line for your building. So since I want the damage on the side here going up because it's gonna be spreading around so the Kamada can kind of sit on this top section here, I'm gonna want this in the center because any seam line that doesn't flush as well as you'd like to, you can hide with damage. So I'm going to glue it here. So we're just gonna wanna set some glue in the corners here. And then you just tack the building on. It's gonna be a little hot, so just as a heads up for that. And then for the top section here, I can peel that back a little bit. Add some more glue. Tuck underneath, good to go. Wipe off a little bit of that at the top. Now, you're gonna to wanna to start wrapping your building around. And hopefully, we got enough here in order to connect, which I do not. Now, what you could do, <laughs> since I need it a little bit more centered, I'm going to have to chop this off. If you just wanted to leave it about this thickness, which I almost kind of want to do, because it's going to be kind of going up, so I might just leave this the way it is. But we could just shave off a little bit more of the building before we officially glued on everything else. But since... Uh, yeah, since he's going to be destroying this section here anyways, uh, I'm just going to glue this actually down to there. So, now, what we're going to want to do is unfold this again. And then for each of these sections, you're just going to add some hot glue to help support it down. It's like to spread it out a bit so that it sticks on there pretty flush. Just press it down a bit. Add some more here. And tack it down. Again, uh, just want to point out that when you're tacking it down, it's going to be hot. Uh, so just as a heads up there. So now we got our damage and you can see that the lining isn't quite perfect. We could flush it down a little bit more if I wanted to, which all you do is you just stick the glue gun in there, apply some glue, rub it off the top, tack it down, wipe away some excess glue. So now we got our building. That part's lifted up a little bit. Uh, again, just add more glue as you seem fit. Uh, also, this is going to be super sticky, so <laughs> prepare to get dirty, especially when you're uh, painting, because there's going to be a lot of times rubbing. Because uh, for a technique, I'm just going to show you how to do it with painting, because uh, I want to try to keep this as kid-friendly as possible. So next, uh, what I'm going to do is chop off the top here, so that we have our flat building surface to work with. 
All right, so now if you just had a building, it's not too bad, right? Uh, next, we need Kamada-kun coming up this and destroying it, and he's gonna be sitting like that. Now that I look at it, the building is probably a little too wide, but whatever. <laughs> Does have to be perfect. I just kind of want him just to be like rawr, smashing buildings. But yeah, I think it was about there. It's about as wide as I would have wanted it, but still gonna work fine. So next we need the destruction for the building where we're gonna be wanting to add the effect. And because he comes up the building and then kind of sits on top, I'm gonna to be adding, wanting it to be right around this chest area where he stops and maybe he sinks in a little bit more. So I want the damage to end right about here because I want to be able to have his knees in there a little bit. And we're gonna be painting over this later, so I'm just gonna to want to add a marker. And I want to stop about there. And then you're gonna to want to get his width which for his legs are right about there. So without painting on your, without getting marker on your figure, I want to stop there and right about there for the damage. And I can make this as big as I want. I think I'm going to come at this at a little bit of an angle and come down. So we just start taking our knife or the exacto knife if you want to be a little bit more precise in certain areas. And then we just start carving this out in order to make our damage. So, getting the camera down because I'm going to need a little bit of a level area. So, I'm going to want to cut into the paper and just start shifting downward. Again, don't want to go too far into it because I could just start tearing these little sections out once I get the right thickness that I want. But you just start cutting into the building. Like so. And then next, since I want some damage anyways, I'm gonna start cutting into the paper and the foam. Like so. It's not gonna be so bad since we have clean edges here anyways, but want to get into the foam a little bit. Plus, if you take off a little bit too much, you can always add some foam back onto it since we are damaging it anyways. So it's not as big of a deal, again. But right there is about where I want to stop, I think. So, you know, straight across. Boom! That section's out. So close to having Kamadaku fit where I want him to. His knees got to go in a little bit more. So I'm just going to take the X-Acto knife because I want to kind of clean that edge up a little bit. And you'll notice around here, the paper is starting to crinkle a bit, but that's not a big deal because it's going to be damaged. So the paper having some damage on it actually helps to add to the overall look. Plus we're going to be adding a little bit of paint to the tips anyways because we're going to be making this gray. And now we got Kamada Kun sitting on his building. Now I'm just going to carve this out a little bit because now he has a little plate to sit on. But I want him to kind of be resting into there. That and his tail's going to be wanting to rear him back anyway. So now I'm just going to start cutting downward and out. So I could make it look like he kind of trailed into the building. And then for this section, you can just kind of start ripping it out afterwards. Like even if you want, you can just use your fingers. Take that part off and just start going into it to make sure you're getting enough chunk out of there. And plus what's nice about this foam too is you can pack it down in order to make the right grooves that you want. Because like I said later, we could add more to the damage look later. But for right now, we have, should be, enough section for him to go into. So next we're gonna add some foam here to help kind of cover up some of the extra little paper hanging off the sides. Uh, for the most part, this looks really clean. So you could add some glue to the sides if you wanted to, to help reinforce it. But for the most part, it looks fine to me. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little bit of damage coming around the sides here. So we can just take our extra little foam block, grab our glue gun, and just kind of run some glue along the center here. And then you just start taking your little chunks, break it off, and just start 
applying it to where the glue is currently drying. And this will add some little chunks so that will give you a little bit more of a damaged look. Then I'll show you guys when I'm done what it's going to look like overall before you paint it. But I'm just going to skip ahead here because it's going to be a lot of me just attaching these on and gluing everything down. Then, uh, as you can see, it's all on here. Next, I'm just going to kind of wipe away some of the glue just uh, so it's a little bit cleaner looking. But for the most part, even if there's like a little bit of glue here and there, it's not, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But here we have the damaged sides. Next, I'm going to attach the foam to the top section here so I can figure out where I want my damage to be on the foam too. So for this, this is where I use the soft foam here. Uh, you could pretty much use whatever the heck you want for the top. You can use like a dark colored cardstock, like black or gray, whatever you want. I like using the soft foam because it's a little bit more pliable. Uh, you can even use uh, like particle board. I mean, pretty much just whatever you feel necessary to add to the top of your building. So uh, I'm going to add some glue to the top here in the corners for right now. Actually, you know, I'll just spread it around. Can't hurt, right? Because we want this to stick as good as possible. Then take your corners of the foam and then make sure it's stuck to the top of the building. Looking pretty good so far. Next, we take the scissors wherever I put those. Now we got the top of our building. I can clean this up with the exacto knife if I want or even just get in a little bit closer with the scissors. For the front section here anyways, we're going to be chopping away this part anyways because again, yamada is going to want to sit in there. So you can just use the scissors if you want. Uh, just be careful to not ding up the foam that you already added. But at least for now, we can get the large chunk out of there pretty easily. And then I'm just going to rip this away because again it doesn't have to be perfect and then you can just take the exacto knife and just start cutting away at the foam here which is one of the reasons why i like using the foam until you get away until you get this section that you want so i just start cutting into it because we're going to be adding damage to this later anyway so it doesn't again matter if it's perfect we just want it good enough so that we know where our line is for the building. Then it being a regular is gonna look better for damage anyways. And with the hot glue, if you're worried about heat or uh, just keep your hands clean, you can always wear a pair of gloves. I personally, I don't care. <laughs> I have no safety for my body. But I'm gonna add a little bit more hot glue right around the sections here. And I'm just gonna start tearing away this to add some extra damage to the top section here as well. And then you just kind of clean up the little strands as you go. You can also do this with the X-Acto knife if it kind of sticks more than you want it to. But for right now, going for speed, I got the need for speed. Just gonna add some more glue here, add to the damage look to the top. Just realized I went cockeyed for you guys, I'm so sorry. But once adding, it's kind of hard for me to work on this while also having it in front of the camera. But now I'm just going to kind of clean it up, take the exacto knife, kind of just start scraping away some of these sections with the back of it. If I want it to look a little cleaner anyways. So now I'm just going to kind of press this in. Could even just add a little bit more glue here and there just to reinforce it more if you want. Just a little dabs. Don't gotta go crazy, just like I did there. But just little dabs here and there, just to help reinforce it a bit. Plus, that's kind of why we have that glue in the back here, because we're just gonna add it to the paint later. But start tacking down a little more. Can even just spread some of the love to some of these other sections here. So here we have our pre-painted damaged building. Hopefully, Kamatakun can still. I still want Kamada Kun to be able to kind of sit in there, so I'm just going to work his way into there a little bit. Still looks pretty good to me. Squish him in a little bit more. Get him to set a bit better. Now, since uh, we got everything set up, next we move to painting. So I got an extra piece of cardstock to put my paint on. I'm just going to shake up my acrylic real quick. Now I'm just going to take some of the acrylic, add it to the paper. Gonna use quite a bit. And then 
We take some of this Elmer glue, add it to the paint. <laughs> For some other reason, I got some dry spot in here, so it's being really stubborn. Pretty generous helping of glue there. This is why I use a paintbrush that you don't care about. And I grabbed the big one here because I might need it for the other building that we're going to do. But I'm going to use a smaller one for this one. So you're going to want to mix the glue and the paint together. As you can see, the paint, the glue isn't really changing the coloring here. Then it wouldn't really matter anyways too much. Uh, again, you can kind of use whatever you wanted for coloring for the damage. Again, I'm going with gray just because I like the look of it a little better. Plus, when adding the glue... It helps to keep the foam kind of compact together. So now we just start painting your foam. And you're just going to cover every little section that you want. If you get a little bit of gray on the paper here, it's not going to be the end of the world because you can just wipe it away. And then it also helps to add to the damaged look as well. Because especially if you want to have like a little bit more of a burnt tip edge to it, the uh, smear the smearing effect actually helps to give it that look. So the technique I use is I kind of brush over it a little bit and then you also just dab in sections that you can't really get into. And you just use a generous portion of paint because uh, like here, I got a lot of paint in the center section here. You can just start spreading that out to other areas. But underneath you're gonna wanna just start dabbing and just going over each section until you get the overall desired look that you want. And just to show you guys before I cut away, I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray to the side. You're like, oopsie, too much paint there. You just take your thumb, start wiping it back towards the damaged area that you want. You can also just go away from it. It doesn't really matter. But you just start wiping it away. And as you can see, really helps to give it more of a damaged look in the end anyways. So you can even just add more to it if you want it but for the most part i'm going to be having a little hiccups here and there i know anyways so those are the parts i'm just going to want to be having having accentuate the building and then we'll start on our taller more skyscraper building and voila here is our fully painted damaged building now you can make this again as complicated as you want because uh for the most part i'm just going to add gray paint to it and call it a day because this will look perfectly fine with pictures and then if i want to use this for other purposes as well because I don't have to have just this set up for uh, Kamada Kun. I could also have like a tail coming into here, so it looks like the tail smashed into the building, or possibly even like a f having a leg sticking out, like having like Ultraman's knee inside of the building or something. Like there's a uh, quite a bit of applications, and as you can see, like some of the sides aren't perfect, but it just sitting here standing with another monster. The paint isn't dry, so I'm not going to be getting close to it, but just having him it sitting next to Baragon. Looks like a building. <laughs> it does what it needs to do. And also on the insides too, you don't have to worry about getting into each nook and cranny. You can pretty much be as persistent as you want with this because for the most part, like you're not gonna be seeing really underneath all the foam pieces here. So you don't really have to get to the paint underneath there. I did, but you don't have to. Same with like, you don't have to paint the under section unless you're gonna have the building like tipping over. Then you're gonna definitely want to, but for the most part, it's just gonna be sitting there. So it's not having paint on the undersection or where I added the foam over top isn't gonna kill anything. So uh, we're gonna let this dry and move on to the skyscraper. So for the skyscraper, again, I'm gonna cut off all the white here and we're gonna just use the rest of the sheet here in order to make a taller building. And I'm going to be chopping off these little windows here and the windows down here because I want the brick sectioning here to be the tops and the bottoms. But for this one, I'm actually going to grab a ruler or something with a straight edge because I want this to be a little bit cleaner. And you can also just use a pair of scissors too if you don't want to use an X-Acto knife and just start cutting along the edge that you want to get off of the building. All right, so now that I got the paper cut, next we're going to grab our foam. So this section here is about as tall as the building I need it to be. And actually, using our little broken piece, we can reference how wide we want it as well because we know it's the exact width as this piece. So lining up the bottom, we want it to be right about here. But uh, on a second thought, I want the seam line to be a little bit closer. So I'm gonna cut it and then figure out the size I need from there. But for the most part, this will work just fine. Uh, again, when 
making your building, you don't have to have it as perfect as you need because you can always just shave off foam as you go in order to get the appropriate size. Yeah, it's not the cleanest, but I'm gonna be planning on shaving some of this off anyways, but that's about the size I want the building to be anyway, so just pretty much keep shaving until you get something close to what you want, which that looks pretty good right there. All right, that's looking pretty even. So now, again, test fit it, make sure that's what I want. So we're good to go there. So now I'm going to glue this side down since I wanna keep it right around the edge here because if I'm gonna do damage, it's probably gonna be along the side here and I could put some more here. But we're gonna have your predominant damage. Again, always have your seam line in that general area. So let's add some hot glue throughout. And then once we get attacked, we'll uh, add the rest of the glue that we need. That's fudging hot. Again, using hot glue, be very careful. That burned a bit. <laughs> it's my finger went over the top of it. Uh, that's gonna suck tomorrow. So now we got that side. Now we just do like we did before, start bending it around and adding more glue. And I like to add some glue throughout because if I add damage to other parts, you don't want the glue, uh, the cardstock shifting on you. Building's looking slightly crooked. Maybe that's just the way I'm seeing it. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, that part's gonna be a little bit too high. So since this part is not nearly as lined up as well as I would like it to, because the, again, the foam piece, the foam that I cut out wasn't perfect. But just like I said in the video, this doesn't have to be perfect to begin with. So now I'm just gonna take the scissors here, cut this off for now, and I'll clean up the edge here a little later. But uh, what you can do is if you screw up sort of like what I did here, we're gonna add some damage to this top anyways. Because of the way it's kind of shifting in a little bit, this is probably where I'm going to add the damage to these little imperfected areas. Because when you're, uh, the foam's imperfect, that just tells you exactly where you want the damage. Uh, if, again, if you're going speed scene specific, then you gotta be a little bit more precise using a ruler and measuring out stuff. But again, because I'm being quick and uh, this one's not a C specific building, ha it having the divot here isn't a big deal because this is just where I'll add the damage to the building. So pretty much it's gonna be curving upwards along here and I'll just keep the bottom pretty much the same maybe add a little bit more damage here so it'll be like the one building I did because that's what happened with that one where it didn't line up so I just added the damage going up throughout the body and I just kind of expanded towards the top so it's not gonna so for the most part I'm gonna not have a lot of the top section here so what I'm actually gonna do is just start cutting away at this section starting down here and I'll just work my way up and then bend it as I get to the top to add some damage to that. So, sit down on the board and just start shaving away at it. Until I get my overall desired look. Add a little bit of ups and downs here and there just to help add to the look. Now here is where I think I'm just gonna curve it upright. And go straight through to right about there. I think it seems good. And then this will be my cutoff point for the building. So now, yeah, we have our partially damaged skyscraper. And now, because as you can see with the imperfection we had earlier, barely noticeable, barely. And this part, I might leave that little divot and just add some crevices around here. Uh, actually, I think I wanna have a top there. I think I'll go with the top there. So this section, I'm just gonna snip off. So now I'm gonna clean up the bottom here. Get my knife out, because this isn't gonna sit flat if I don't. So just, Shave off a little bit of foam there. So now building stands upright, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna start adding some hot glue here in the crevices 
in order to get this sides a little bit more flush because this is the part where the hot glue didn't really stick down very well and i just want to fill in the areas that are super lifted up on here so like on the top here got a little bit of hot glue there just pad the building down a bit without burning myself again and that looks pretty good to me because i'm going to be adding some foam over the top anyway so this doesn't have to be perfect because i'm just going to make more edges here along the sides in order to make the damage. Now what you could do here is if you want to have more recesses, you can start carving it out a little bit. And what's nice too is if, again, you can make this as complicated as you want. So if you wanted to add some more damage look to it, you could get some thin wire, chop that up to make it look like support beams are sticking out of here if you wanted. But I'm not doing that for this video anyways. But for me, I'm happy enough just with the damage effect. I'd be even happier if I could get this chunk of foam out of here. Being super stubborn. There we go. So I'm going to rip that out. Pat these sections down a little bit better. Into the crevice there. And start squishing the foam down a bit to help give it a little bit more of a compact look. And then again, we can just add some more foam to the sides here in order to accentuate the damage. And then I'm just going to do the same going down the center here as well. So I'm just going to cut all the way down to about here and just come into the edges a bit. I don't want to do this. And then you just cut down a bit. And then we just start flicking, getting some of the foam out of here. Use the X-Acto knife and just peel away at the foam in here. So now we got a little divot. Squish it down a bit. clean it out a little more and now we have the full damage look that I'm going for anyways now I'm gonna start adding the damage to the sides here just like I showed you but again take the hot glue add a little to the start adding a little bit to the sides here and then just take some of the foam that you chopped off and just start adding it to the sides here all right, so now that I got my foam edges all set up, I'm going to glue the top section back onto here so that we have a little bit of a roof. So I'm just gonna apply some glue here. Pick a corner, but since I already cut into this side, I'm just gonna use this corner here. Nice thing about hot glue too, is that it dries super fast. And then cut away at the sections here. And then just like the other one, we're going to clean it up with an X-Acto knife. But for the most part, that's pretty much the way I want it. So now I'm just going to go along the edge with the hot glue gun. Take some extra bits of foam laying around. Just start squishing it in. So now I'm going to sit here, clean up a little bit of the glue on the top of the building. If I wanted to, I could add some rubble to the top section here as well. But for the rest of this, I kind of want to look a little cleaner. Now that we have it all set up, next we uh, just paint all the gray back onto here. Which, still got quite a bit of it laying around from the last one. So we just start adding our gray to it. Make sure to apply a generous amount to each of the sectioning. And then I will come back once I am all done painting this one as well. But as you can see, just brush it on, dab it in, because there's going to be a lot of little nooks and crannies to get the paint into. Now for these sections down here, you're really going to have to dab. Uh, as you can see, I got a big old smear right here, but that'll be fine. I can clean that up a little bit later, add some more damage if I wanted to, to that part. But uh, adding to the sections here, you're just going to want to just dab the paint into there. And just try to fill it as much as possible. You can even just 
you get a little bit a couple of broken pieces of foam that come off just squish it down with the paint once it dries it'll sit in there pretty well and here is the final product for the damaged building as you can see uh got a giant pink glob right there so might add a little bit of a damage effect to that section as well which for these areas if you want to add a little bit of damage here just uh pretty much just take the exacto knife and just kind of start cutting into the foam cut out that little section i mainly just want it where the giant glob is so that works for me then i'm just gonna cut it in half too so now that that section's out you can just start cutting away at this section a little bit just to make it a little bit softer get some of the foam out of there and if i wanted to i could probably make this section connect that could be cool but I think I'll just leave this as a gouge. So now that's set up. Now we just pack it down. Add a little bit of glue. Go around the edge. Smear it a bit. Take some extra foam pieces. Start packing that around the edges. So now I got a little bit of damage on the side here. Take our paint. Try not to glob it this time. I'm just gonna fill this in. Yeah, just a lot of dabbing and just making sure you don't see any sparkles there is what you're going for. So, looks pretty good to me. I could take some of the cardstock, go around the edge and try to clean it up a little bit. Smooth out the paint a little bit for some of the imperfections. But for me, that looks pretty good. Oh, missed the spot. Right there. See some sparkling right there out of the corner of my eye. Plus what's nice too is you can always just go back over this and paint it again later. And then also you can add more detail by adding some darker coloring. Like you could kind of what, what I would actually say is do this jet black and then go over it with the gray lightly to add a little bit more effect to it if you wanted to. But this will give you the overall like quick base effect for the building. And yeah, that's a... Pretty much it for this one. And with these extra little sections too, if you wanted, you could chop these away and actually make rubble for around your buildings if you wanted to make it more of a diorama piece. But for that, you'd have to have like a little stand for your building in order to do this. Otherwise your foam piece is just gonna flop around, which I might do in another video. Make a little setup display with a building and like a kaiju. But for now, we're just gonna stick with the buildings. And to conclude this video, here is the two buildings. Uh, still wet, so I can't have them like fully interacting with the kaijus. But here they are next to Shin Godzilla and Kamada Kun, and I think they look pretty, uh, pretty good next to them. Uh, it's gonna do its job, do its job nicely. Because it's just like grabbing my other destroyed building, which this one I did a little bit of a different technique with. But these are overall your safe practices anyways but looks really cool it helps to give them a little bit more accentuation in your display and you can pretty much just go crazy and ham with however you want to set up your buildings because even if you wanted super clean buildings just angling them a little bit better so you guys can see the same technique will work you just pretty much just don't add the damage effect to it just make sure the seam lines line up very nicely so yeah uh, let me know if you guys would be more interested in a couple of like do-it-yourself videos like i could do a display and also go over how i did this one in particular which is requires a lighter but yeah just uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing any more like little do-it-yourself ones i actually have a resin kit coming in probably next month i might work on that might be a patreon thing though like i might go over the need doing the entire figure and then just like some do-it-yourself stuff while I'm uh, assembling it. Or even more diorama setups, like possibly having like a building with some rubble on the ground so your kaijus can stand next to them and make a little, pretty much stands for each of them. I could probably go over that too eventually. But anyways, again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys are interested in, in any more do-it-yourself stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.